Good afternoon and welcome to the Portfolio Day of 2024. Woo! Just to give a, a brief presentation about the Portfolio Day, I just want to say that this is a special day for every fellow in the MPC. And it's very important for us to share what we did throughout the semester with you guys. So thank you for being here. And thank you, the fellows, for presenting your amazing experiences. So without any further ado, um, let's begin. The first person who will present um, in the portfolio day is going to be me. So please welcome me, Sofia Salazar. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me before I start with my personal experiences. This semester for me was very special because it's my first one and I had a lot of realizations of what I want to do with my career and what I, what I want to do in my future. So yeah, there's that. So my personal experiences um, varied a lot from art stuff and photography stuff. My milestone was to take pictures and create a portfolio um, with pictures of every week. Um, sadly, I couldn't make that possible because I came out with um, the realization that a portfolio is about my work and my, uh, and my projects. And there's a grading form that can be um, for those type of things I wanted to document about my ex experiential learning and the process throughout all weeks. So it's not a portfolio anymore, it's a grading form. So my first personal experience was um, concert photography. Um, this was a thing I'd like to do uh, since I was starting in photography. I always wanted to go to a concert and take pictures and go backstage and do cool, cool stuff. So I got the opportunity with Tavo Barcenas here are some photos, and in the next slide, we have some other ones. These are my favorite. Uh, there are a lot of photos, but these are the selection of my favorite ones. Um, it was a very cool experience for me to have, um, since I always wanted to do that. Then I have sculpture. Um, I did this um, one meter sculpture for uh, my family's restaurant. It was a very cool experience for me because it was my first time doing something like this and this big. Um, I don't have any picture of it hanging in the restaurant, but here is the final result. result. And it was very cool to do this. Um, I got sick because the, the dust from this is very like dangerous for you. <laughs> so um, there's that. Then uh, as another personal experience, I have a photo shoot we recently did with Cam and Luz projects for one of their courses. Um, this was a very cool experience, experience because I got to help Cam with the photographs and um, going on a field trip and making some cool content for, for their page is just amazing. And we had a lot of fun, and this is me taking pictures. This is Cam, <laughs> I took a picture of her. Then, uh, as another uh, experiential, uh, personal experience, I have live drawing, which I did with Isa Castaneda. Um, of course, I cannot show you the whole experience because, yeah. Um, but <laughs> we um, drew about 10 to 12 drawings, if I remember. Um, and it was a really cool experience where we got to um, develop our like fluency in drawing. We did some drawings for about like 10 to 15 minutes. It was a really cool experience that I want and I will uh, repeat soon. And then um, I went to an expo, an art expo uh, that is called uh, Diaz por Diaz. Uh, basically, it's 10 artists and each artist uh, shows and uh, gives 10 um, art pieces. And it was very cool to see a hundred um, artworks um, just there and getting to know the, the artist. Uh, we went with Isa Castañeda also with the purpose of knowing what is an artist statement and how the, the artists talk about their art, what do they express to the public, and how is it managed. As a final experience, I have me sharing my voice 
in social media. Um, this is one of my, I would say, biggest, biggest, uh, <laughs> this is me singing. I feared a lot sharing my voice on the internet. I like to sing. I'm not the best, but I do like it. And this year, um, one of my milestones, my mini milestones was, was to be able to share that with um, my social media followers. So I did that. I did, I published like three of these videos and I received very good comments about it that hyped me up. And it's a really cool experience to share your work with others, right? So there's that with the personal experiences. Now I'm gonna talk about the created experiences of this semester. The first one is Fotografiarte. Um, the aim with this experience was to um, teach uh, my, my fellows um, how to take uh, some portraits in home. Um, portraits have this really cool characteristic to themselves that um, they talk about yourself and they show the people who you are and what are you feeling in that moment but sometimes we don't have the tools to make them and we can make it make them at home so that's that was the aim of the the experience i really liked um, the people who participated in this uh, experience that they got to show me and their themselves what were they feeling that day and it was really cool then we have uh, storytelling which is an experience we did with isa um, and it's related to this at Diaz por Diaz Expo we went, um, where we taught uh, our fellows how to uh, talk about your art, what goes after and what goes um, before all that process of making your art. Then we have um, this experience uh, where I showed uh, what color skin theory is and how you can use colors uh, according to your skin. And as a final uh, point, I have attended experiences. This uh, semester I attended to 10 experiences, which I'm very happy about. Not because I got to go to these experiences, but because I got to learn from my fellows. And that is the most important thing about this day and also the experiential learning, to get to know what others are, are doing and and to get to know about that and and yeah learn about that so i did the three of cam <laughs> we did permaculture what system thinking um coffee methods then with uh, lou we did uh their ca cartoon character then matthias's we did this which was one of my favorites then we did yesterday one and we can keep going with a lot of cool experiences that uh, made me learn from um, each other and i really appreciate appreciated those times so yeah thank you hello today i want to tell you a story about a little kid this kid was a pretty regular kid nothing too crazy nothing out of the ordinary but this kid this kid was abnormal, abnormally scared. Scared of people, scared of life. Infinitely shy and anxious. Little by little, this kid grew up and developed wonderful things like passion, wonder, dreams and aspirations, but also new fears. Fear became paralyzing, an obstacle impossible to overcome, a wall between what was and what could be. So many things that the kid didn't get to do because she was too scared to even try. In case you haven't figured it out, that kid was me. This kid. This insecure little girl caused me so much trouble. So many things I wish I had done, but I would always run away. Run away from opportunities, from experiences, from the things that I really wanted. And you know, fear and anxiety and insecurity are really confusing to me. Because what do you mean that I really want to do this? But I'm not able to actually do it. And I'm just too scared. I'm, a, I'm always holding back. What am I scared of? Seems a little ridiculous when I look back to that day when I was about to compete on a literature contest. But I didn't. Because I was too scared. I cried that day. I really wanted to participate. 
but something held me back. Now, I'm not here to whine about my childhood frustrations. These were questions that I've been asking myself for the, for the past few years. And the main one is, thank you. how do I fix it? How do I overcome this? I need to get over my fears. It's easier said than done. Has anyone here seen The Bear, the TV show? It's a good show, it's not that important, but yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in season two, there's a plot point in which they talk about this book, Coach K's Leading with the Heart. I haven't read it, and I'm not going to because I don't like self-help books. However, there's a concept that I really like, courage and confidence. He says, leaders must be willing to take risks, make tough decisions, and stand up for what they believe in, even in the face of adversity. And leaders need to believe in themselves and their abilities in order to inspire and motivate, motivate others. But the important part is, confidence breeds trust and respect among team members. And I have come to the conclusion that the first team member is always you. I mean, not you, but like me, as in oneself, you know? <laughs> so confidence, if confidence breeds trust and respect among team members, and the first team members are me, myself, and I, it's crucial that I develop a strong sense of confidence. And that's what this semester was all about, confidence. But how to go about building confidence? It's not an easy task. So I did what I know best. I lingered on the past. I have, I have made a very improvised, not thorough an analysis of my confidence levels across the years. And I grafted to seem smarter and more, more legit. These are my school years, roughly. And, you know, like I was growing up and developing certain abilities. So, you know, it was like steadily growing on confidence. Then in 2020, something crazy happened. Maybe you guys remember it. Um, it was quite a big event. And, you know, a lot of things happened during those years of isolation. So my confidence was decimated. Um, but the interesting part is that around the end of July of 2022, July 25th of 2022 to be exact, Someone said to me, I also get scared, usually. And with those words, the journey of becoming a person began. And the rest is history. Now we're here. I won't go into the detail, but in the past two years, I've experienced exponential growth in my confidence. And I believe that it was all thanks to jumping into opportunities, taking a leap of faith. Well, sometimes it wasn't really a leap of faith. It was more like a pressure push that I just need to do things. But it's about facing challenges and making it out alive. And that's what I did this semester. During this semester, I tried numerous things. And I like to think that I succeeded in most of them. I had my, I had my first real life experience in, my, in one of my chosen fields of work. I revisited my past beliefs and creative journeys. I planned and executed a very ambitious project. And everything went extremely well. And I got back into something that I love. And that consequently forced me into taking my career more seriously, so I made a portfolio. I wish I could say that all these experiences and points in my life were planned and that I actually thought a lot about it and made a clear plan of how to build my confidence. But it wasn't. M most of these experiences kind of just fell onto my lap. And it took an insane amount of mental strength to say yes to most of them. I don't think I can say that my confidence levels are the ideal ones. I am still that scared little kid, but they are enough for me to take the next step and to start taking more risks. The future terrifies me, especially now that I'm so excited about it. But with this dream team of me, myself and I, and all of the people that are walking alongside me on this journey, I will find the confidence that I need and that's so desperately desired. And I want to start with this phrase, which I wrote for you guys, which is kind of one of my conclusions for this final portfolio day. And oh, I'm so emotional, actually. But um, ejercitar el final es ejercitar el proceso. Um, it's been like four years of a lot of hard work. And it's been a lot of years of a lot of eventful things <laughs> and moments. And, the first thing I wanted to share with you guys is that everything is always changing. So 
the more you do, the more you realize there's more to do. And um, this is a little illustration of one of my last projects, which I like to think is this kind of mangoes and volcanoes in a screen that are passing by. And um, so I wanted to start with that, like even when it's like things are ending, it's like beginning of something else, right? Another lesson of um, this semester and because my milestone was all about like concluding things and, and like bringing things to an end, right? And actually I'm really bad with endings. <laughs> but um, I learned a lot about the importance of collaboration and of teaching and what teaching might mean sometimes, which I think is sometimes doing, but sometimes also just not doing and like just opening a space for other people to hang out with you, to, to listen to other people, or maybe these people want to listen to you, to collaborate with friends and peers. And um, we had some really beautiful experiences with and with, like an outside, within and outside uh, the MPC where not only you guys participated, like Matias here on the top in our workshop, in La Nueva Fabrica, that I facilitated for that exhibition, and uh, taking my parents to this conference on non-objectual art uh, at La Nueva Fabrica. And here is like one of our prep Zooms with Sarina Castillo, where we worked for, um, for a choreography at La Universidad Rafael Landívar. Okay, I'm catching my breath a bit, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, uh, the chapter three of this presentation was about um, just being grateful about my peers, I think. I sometimes feel like I haven't been there enough uh, for you guys, but I think I was in my little cocoon and I needed that time. And this semester, I really feel like I took more part or I tried to be more present. And I really feel like uh, it was very nourishing, like both like virtually and in presence, like we had opportunities both from the experience I created, experiences I created, and the experiences you guys created, and some other experiences that we just created, like because we wanted to do something together. Um, it was a big learning experience that I feel we just worked in teams. Like I also felt like I got to see how much you've grown and you like learn in pursuing your activities and projects. So I'm very proud of you guys, and I'm really thankful that I could be part of those things. Uh, chapter four was also a, like a kind of like less fun part, I guess, like this semester was fun, but it was very demanding and very tiring and it was all worth it, I think, um, which was this part of, um, of a milestone was uh, kind of completing the work I usually do as an artist, which being an artist means creating and having a practice, but it also means like working with people and like being in a social network and I really dedicated time to to investing uh, some of this uh, experiential learning, uh, yeah, hours in like visiting exhibitions and uh, attending events, showing up, um, collaborating and doing projects with others and going to see other people's uh, work. Cause I think that's very important. Like in the end, like not only like the university community is important, but the community with people outside, right? The, the professional world, which is I think where in this semester, I really managed to make that leap. Um, two years ago, uh, one of my mentors told me I really had to focus that this year was a year to like kind of really take that leap of transition. And I feel like I I feel like it's really happening. So I'm very thankful. Then in the chapter five, I wanted to share a lot about the <laughs> very intensive experiential learning of both uh, kind of performative investigations out there in the landscape plus uh, collaborating with people to produce artwork which is like I have already produced uh, some of my projects with the help of other people but this time I think I really I really did some big projects with the help of people that had different skills and um, it was a really big learning experience to coordinate and to collaborate with a team and just know which roles everybody or each of us play. And I think I, I managed to do the things I wanted to do. So, um, which was, I mean, I narrated both two experience, two exhibitions, one collective one at Correos, which you can still visit if you haven't. And uh, it's uh, open nine to five, I think, from Monday to Friday where I have this installative work called Nostalgia Botanica, and there's the work of other artists that 
are also very interesting and that I encourage you to visit. And my first uh, major solo exhibition at La R, which is called Volcanes, Mangos y Amor, which you still have a few days to visit because it's closing the 11th of May, which was really a milestone to do, but I think it was all worth it. And um, I'm very thankful to, to MPC for just giving me the space to grow and learn and to be an overachiever like usually, but with some guidance and love. So I, I say goodbye with this, with a bow of humbleness because there's so much to learn still. And that this is me, a representation metaphorically of me in my cocoon, which I feel like I kind of came out now. And um, I just wanted to, to read one last thing to you guys uh, from the Tao, uh, which says, Tu has no haciendo, actúa no actuando, saborea no saboreando, pues lo grande es pequeño y lo mucho es poco. Tu piensa lo difícil con lo fácil, tómate lo grande por pequeño, que los asuntos difíciles del mundo se resuelven con lo fácil y los grandes asuntos del mundo estimando los pequeños. De ahí que el maestro nunca busca lo grande y así logra lo grande. Quien promete a la ligera, difícil cumplirá lo prometido. Quien lo ve todo muy fácil, se hallará en apuro sin fin. Pero el maestro lo ve primero difícil y así ve más adelante que no había dificultad. So thank you very much and uh, let's, uh, yeah, that was all. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias a todos por estar acá. Felicidades también a todos porque estamos llegando a la parte final del semestre. Así que buen trabajo a todos, mis queridos fellows. Y también al staff por siempre estar ahí para nosotros. Muchas gracias. Lo primero que aprendí es sobre el valor de la amistad y de apoyar las actividades y los eventos de mis amigos y de los fellows como Acá estamos en una actividad que organizó Aileen, estuvo muy bonita, pues aprendimos a hacer nuestro personaje en forma de, de una flor y para mí fue todo un gusto haberla ido a apoyar. Acá estamos en una experience de Isa donde aprendí a manejar mis emociones también a través del método de Carl Jung y la verdad estuvo muy interesante. Y pues acá estamos en una experience que organicé de latín. Fueron tres experiences, esta fue la primera. Y también acá está la prueba de que la comunidad del MPC va más allá de las fronteras, porque tuvimos a Katia de forma virtual desde España. Esta foto es de ayer en una experience con un gran amigo, Diego Lara. Y eh, esta foto es una experience de otro gran amigo, también José Santos, que he aprendido mucho de ellos y de diferentes temas que no necesariamente son lo que yo hago. La segunda cosa que aprendí es la importancia de aprender juntos, en otras palabras, la convivencia y comunidad. Aquí, por ejemplo, estamos en la segunda experience que organicé de latín y en esta es una experience que organicé sobre cómo hacer una lectura más consciente y me gustó mucho que trajeron sus, sus libros para poder aplicar los tips. Esta foto es de la tercera experience de latín también algo que tenemos en el MPC es que creo que somos muy resilientes y nos podemos adaptar ante cualquier situación y pues esta vez no pudimos estar presencial, pero nos organizamos para hacer las actividades en línea. Acá fue una experiencia de Katia que me gustó mucho, que es sobre ser un explorer of the world, que prácticamente nos enseñó a ver lo extraordinario en lo ordinario. Aquí estamos en una foto que... Eh, una experiencia que hice con Nicolás Bonilla sobre cómo mejorar los ensayos académicos y aquí trabajando en equipo en el MP Camp, que estuvo muy bonito. Este era mi equipo, muy grandes amigos y nuestra bandera, que la verdad quedó súper cool. También aprendí sobre el bienestar que me trae a hacer diferentes actividades que no necesariamente son de mi enfoque académico, Acá estoy pintando un mar que Aileen con mucha paciencia me enseñó porque a mí no me quedaba. Y pues también aprendí yo a ser paciente y no desanimarme si no me quedaba la primera. Pero me di cuenta que hacer algo con mis manos y no estar escribiendo todo el tiempo ensayos o leyendo cosas académicas me ayudó a mejorar en esos aspectos también. Este es el mar, que no parece un mar, pero está bien. Es, es the first try. Y otra foto de la actividad que organizó del Jardín Creativo que me gustó un montón.
Bueno, otras de las actividades, por ejemplo, esta de Nina, que fue una experience de, de cómo tener nuestra masa madre en casa. Y pues vi una receta después en YouTube y ahí desarrollé mis cooking skills. Hice una pizza con esa masa madre. También publiqué un poema en Pluma Joven, que es un, es un club de aquí de El Amarro, del CHH que no sabía que tenía ese lado creativo diferente, porque todo el tiempo estoy escribiendo cosas académicas, pero ahí salió. Y el francés en Duolingo, que llevo cuatro años seguidos sin parar. Y de otras actividades random, un día solamente decidí empezar a hacer un curso de egiptología en línea. Y ahí vamos poco a poco, pero ha estado muy interesante. Y seguimos también desarrollando las cooking skills estos, algo de lo que he hecho también porque he estado ya por dos años en un personal nutrition journey porque quiero mejorar mis hábitos, mi salud, eso es muy importante para también poder desarrollarse en las actividades académicas. También habilidades de liderazgo, no solo personales, sino también con mis compañeros y mis fellows. Esta imagen es de la experience de conscious reading que hice, esta es de la experiencia colectiva que hice con Nicolás sobre ensayos y ahí estamos dando feedback a uno de los ensayos de Nico. Estas fotos me gustaron un montón, créditos a José, que es súper buen fotógrafo. Sí, bueno, aquí está José también. Eh, la verdad es que la pasamos muy bien y, y sentí que pude también desarrollar esas habilidades de liderazgo y también ellos también aprendieron mucho. Y finalmente las actividades académicas, ahí estamos con Nina en, en el Orientation Day de este semestre. Bueno, mi milestone que era aprender sobre el latín este semestre, porque durante los últimos tres semestres decidí que quería aprender lo básico de griego, latín y el próximo semestre alemán, eh, con el propósito de entender mejor algunas ideas en textos filosóficos. Y empecé a trabajar en el Great Work, porque si todo sale bien, este es mi penúltimo Portfolio de y qué pena esa foto, pero ahí estoy trabajando en eso. Y otras actividades como disfrutar del campus porque es muy hermoso y, y muy, muy lindo. A mí me da mucha serenidad. Algunas de las presentaciones que hemos hecho en, en clase eh, con Aileen, Diego y Matías en nuestro curso de Backbone of Philosophy y esta actividad diferente y muy bonita del Centro Vernon Smith. Y también y hice un poco de lectura. La verdad es de que esta vez no me enfoqué tanto en leer un montón, sino en leer poco. Pero que de verdad se me quedara y algo que pudiera compartir. Entonces, estas son algunas de las lecturas que hice. Y terminar con esta frase. Muchas gracias a todos por un gran semestre. Y aquí estamos. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my what is it, fourth portfolio day, we're getting close to the end. Um, so this one will be shorter than the last time, I think. I, wanted, I didn't write a script this time, so bear with me. Um, every semester, I kind of ask myself this question, because it's kind of like a closing question, you know, what is it that I want to take of this semester with me? And today, I will be sharing with you five things that I'll be taking with me this semester. And it's, they're things that I've learned not only this last semester or this present semester, but kind of like accumulating, accumulating uh, since I came into the MPC. And the first one is called fail upwards. And what do I mean by this? There's something very special about failure. Um, chasing failure and seeking failure as a way of improving is, I, is something very important for me, I think. It's something that I've learned at the MPC. And while it does come naturally to some people that are really amazing at it, to me, it doesn't. Uh, failure to me has always been very dreadful. And I dreaded failing people or failing myself or failing in any kind of situation. Um, but thanks to the MPC, thanks to this semester where I've done a lot of sewing, uh, macrame, drawing, painting, uh, going to the gym, running, uh, and plenty of other things. I've kind of encountered failure a lot, and I've, only, and I'm not, I've not only encountered it this semester, but also the past semesters. And I think I've come to 
be more comfortable with it and embrace it a little bit more. Because I think if you can find that mindset of, you know, seeing failure as something that can propel you forward, that's kind of like the secret sauce to most things. Okay, and number two, uh, enjoyment is the goal. So if you're like me, um, you're someone who, you know, overthinks everything and is like planning all the time. It's like, oh, I can't do that because I need to make a plan and I need to make a schedule. And blah, blah, blah. If you're like me. Um, but the more I've grown in this life and in this experience at the NPC and this semester, the more I realized that things usually work out better when you're just not that focused on, you know, the intellectualization of things and kind of like just enjoying it, like having fun. For example, uh, me and Javi and Bea, who are not here, we uh, put up a, an exposition this semester and it was a mess. Like we had no idea how much time it would, have, it would take. But at one point, Javi just said, I'm just glad to be here with you guys and having fun. And that kind of like shifted my perspective a lot. And it made me realize that I also had a lot of fun here and here and here in this little alien thingy I did in one of my classes. So yeah, maybe focusing on enjoying the process, as men I would say, is probably the smartest thing to do. And then number three, this one's uh, kind of like a throwback to when I was studying in the US. But my old boss at theater had this phrase that she would say, and she would say, aim to be stretched, never stressed. I always liked that phrase. Um, but yeah, I think it's very important because what it emphasizes, and is something that Julia also said, is find those moments of tranquility and rest and recharging in between you know, the really intense process of being at the MPC and making courses and doing the courses and searching for mentors, take time to just take a walk at the campus or up a mountain or have some time with your family and friends. It's very important too. Next, number four, you maketh yourself. And this is something that I didn't really learn because of my own experiences, but mostly by watching others. I think we all have something to say here. We all have a, a voice. And you can choose to you know, say something with it or not, either way is fine. But if you are going to use your voice to say something and make something and create, never ever let anyone step on it. Because you must be ferocious, relentless in achieving your goals. We, we will be hit by failures, but we, we will be hit by challenges, but we must be pit bulls with our jaws locked on what we're trying to achieve. And number five, the last one, that I think is kind of like the most important one. Um, sometimes where we end up is not where we intended, but that's also okay. Um, yeah, I think sometimes we don't end up where we intended and that's okay as long as we are satisfied with what we have done with our process and where the direction is taking us. Um, there are no rules as long as you don't step on others during that exercise as well. Uh, so cause no harm and take no criticism, uh, celebrate the victories of others and be on, I was gonna say something, but just be very, very consistent. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Isa, Isabel Castañeda y hoy les voy a presentar mi portfolio del semestre. Primero, empezando por las attended experiences. Primero fui a esta de Oil and Glass que nos dio Aileen e hice este payasito que la verdad fue súper refrescante pintar con oils después de un par de meses de no haberlos usado. Luego fui a este Personal Style en, cart en Cartoons con Analo. Hice mi cartoon como yo. <ríe> Me hice esta blusa pensando en esta blusa. Y por último fui al de Photography y Self Portraits con Sophie, que los tomamos con nuestro celular. Fue súper interesante eh, cada uno manipular el set como quisiera. Y las extras a las que fui fue al de Masa Madre que nos dio Nina y el Museo Maya con Matías. Ahora las que yo hice, eh, hice esta de Poetry, Communication and Imagination, que era más que todo agarrar el poema de un autor y crear otro poema como respuesta que nos sirve para entrar en otro estilo y otra manera de hablar en la poesía. Y 
También le hicimos un poema a una obra visual. Esto fue unos ejercicios que hice en mi clase de poesía. Luego hice este de taller de autoexploración con mandalas, que lo hice en mi, en mi curso de psicoanálisis y arte, que a partir de cuatro prompts representativos de cada arquetipo de Jung, o los más importantes, eh, cada uno pudo tener su, su propia simbología eh, representativa de cada quien. Y por último, eh, con Sophie hicimos este eh, experience de storytelling y de statement y cómo el storytelling en la ejecución de la obra o proyecto es muy importante para poder llegar a un statement que se pueda adaptar a donde vayamos a presentar nuestros proyectos y poder hablar de nuestras obras sabiendo lo que estamos diciendo y seguros de nosotros mismos. Ahora, mis personal experiences. Igual que Sophie, fuimos a esta exposición de 10x10 con mi mentor Igal Permut. Eh, aquí estamos en una foto con el artista Mario López, que nos estuvo explicando un poco sobre su obra, cómo lo hizo. Eh, y luego ya en clases con mi mentor estuvimos hablando de cómo eso se relaciona al, al discurso y la conceptual, conceptualización de obras. Luego fui a esta de Sonrisas de Papel, también con Sophie con el artista, nos invitó el artista Byron Rodas, que será nuestro mentor el otro semestre. Eh, y aquí está el artista Marcos Cospín, que fue el que expuso ese día. Y era súper interesante porque eran caricaturas de estas que salen en la prensa. Entonces él nos contó sobre su proceso y cómo era todo, todo el proceso de publicarlo también. Eh, y fue súper interesante porque nunca había ido a un lugar donde le, le dieran espacio a este tipo de, de artes. Y, el semestre pasado no pude, por mal management de tiempo, leer absolutamente nada por diversión. Entonces, este semestre mi meta era leer lo que pudiera y lo que pude fue leer dos libros. Y aparte de leerlos por diversión, analizar cómo la escritura y cada tema puede influir a mi propia escritura. Entonces, primero leí Demian, de Herman Hesse, que la verdad ese libro me fascina. Um, y este es más poético, toda la historia, todo el libro es la vida de, del protagonista. Y leí After Dark de Haruki Murakami, que es totalmente lo contrario. Toda la historia, todo el libro se desarrolla en una noche, es súper cinematográfico, descriptivo y directo. Entonces esos temas me gustaría también incorporarlos en mi escritura. Luego eh, comencé a hacer escultura en la casa del escultor. Eh, pues esta es una técnica bastante académica, por lo que claro que empecé con un pie. <risa> y fue un reto bastante grande, la verdad me tardé mucho más que muchas personas en llegar a terminar el pie. No lo traje porque se está horneando, entonces, <risa> entonces, pero sí logré sacar mi primera obra de escultura. Ahorita estoy empezando una mano, pero está casi en cero, entonces pues. Luego fui a este drawing workshop donde durante tres horas el, la meta era soltar el trazo. Entonces, este es mi primer sketch que no se ve. Eh, se ve súper chiquito y súper tenso. Eh, y después, este es el último, que logré soltar el trazo, logré hacerlo más grande, eh, tenía más fluidez. Y aquí hay otros que también me gustaron, que hice durante el workshop. Eh, y por último, este es el que más me emociona, la verdad, de mis experiences. Todo empezó con una máscara que hice para mi curso de Jung, de psicoanálisis y arte, que esta, que se me vive rompiendo, pero esta, eh, que la verán más en el expo de okay. uh, Después de esa, empecé a hacer varias más. Hice este payaso, son bastante pequeñas. Eh, creo que la figura del payaso es algo que estoy desarrollando mucho dentro de mi obra y se puede jugar mucho con, con esta figura. Luego hice esta, que representa muchas veces cómo la sobresaturación de sentimientos nos hace sentir un poco enfermos, como humanos, ¿verdad? Y por último hice esta, que es totalmente lo contrario a la azul, que es como el idealizar y romantizar el querer vivir y hacer, y como mucho naivnes eh, al querer hacer las cosas. Y este proyecto me emociona un montón porque eh, el mensaje que quiero mandar es cómo los humanos tenemos diferentes facetas, no querer mezclar ni confundir con la hipocresía, pero cómo el humano tiene este, esta característica de adecuación a diferentes situaciones de la vida que nos dan diferentes facetas. Y por último, mi milestone, 
pues originalmente le iba a dedicar más tiempo a la guitarra, a seguir como el semestre pasado, pero tomé un paso para atrás y estuve aprendiendo a leer partituras, que es un proceso bien difícil, más difícil de lo que uno cree. Es como aprender a leer desde cero, entonces estuve con un libro básico, tratando de diferenciar cada cosa. Igual seguí practicando algunas canciones y también originalmente iba a complementar con el canto. No les voy a cantar hoy, pero <risa> eh, al final le terminé dedicando muchísimo más tiempo al canto. Recibo clases una vez a la semana, dos horas, y me ha ayudado muchísimo al confidence que yo tengo. Eh, cada vez siento como los nervios eh, interfieren menos en la, en la ejecución del performance, que ya me estoy empezando a acostumbrar un poco cada vez más. He aprendido muchas cosas como el eh, control del aire, la postura y a dónde dirigir el sonido a partes de la cara, dependiendo qué es lo que queremos deliver. Y aparte, pensándolo al final, fue como perfecto, porque el otro semestre voy a estudiar muchísimo el performance también y cosas más teatrales. Entonces, como el ponerme a mí, eh, frente a las personas y ser vulnerable me va a ayudar mucho al futuro y estoy muy contenta con los resultados y muchas gracias. Buenas tardes a todos, como ustedes ya saben yo soy José y si no me conocen no los culpo, eh, pues me presento José Javier Santos Vargas a su disposición, siempre estamos aquí aunque no estemos presentes físicamente. Este semestre fue algo más, fue diferente para mí, ¿Por qué? Porque vengo de un semestre muy con muchas faltas dentro de tanto mi vida personal como una vida académica. Entonces, estoy muy feliz porque creo que ahora estoy presentando algo digno, no solo de presentar, sino que más orgulloso a mí. Y pues, creo que lo mejor sería empezar. Antes de empezar sobre mí, quiero... Antes de empezar las cosas sobre mí, quiero darle el spotlight a lo que aprendí sobre ustedes este semestre. Y esto es con las experiencias a, la que, a las que asistí. Las primeras, en orden cronológico, experiencias que asistí fueron a las de Julia. Muchas gracias, Julia. El aprender latín. Tengo que admitir que en esta primera vez que asistí me emocioné un poco porque pensé que estaba hablando italiano y empecé a gritar un poco. Fue muy entretenido. Fue algo que me gustó hacer mucho porque salió un poco de esta zona de estar callado y estar más activo, estar más presente en lo que hago. También asistí a la tercera, a la tercera sesión, pero a mi segunda experience de aprender latín sobre Julia. En este momento estoy un poco enojado porque perdí el Kahoot. Obviamente no es una buena mirada para mí porque solo éramos tres presentes y obviamente tiene que haber un perdedor, pero fui un buen perdedor. Asistí a cómo ser un explorador del mundo con Katia. Esta experience me pareció muy interesante de asistir. ¿Por qué? Porque con las personas con las que estaba dentro de la experience no las había conocido mucho y conocer sus experiencias, cómo viven, cómo trabajan, fue algo que me gustó mucho aprender y además compartir lo poco que sé sobre la vida. Después, cómo aprender a leer Consciously, también una experiencia de Julia, donde llevé las meditaciones de Marco Aurelio. Voy a indagar un poco más en estas en un futuro, pero fue una experiencia muy provechosa ya que me permitió ver una nueva capa del libro que estaba leyendo y pues el que me gusta tanto. Después asistí a la tercera y última experiencia de Katia, Let's share. De nuevo, decidí asistir a esta porque no conocía también a Katia, incluso a Matías, pero aprender sobre ustedes, de nuevo, aprender sobre ustedes lo que hacen y pues me fascina. Aunque no hable mucho, ¿no? me fascina aprender sobre ustedes y intento abrirme un poco, poco, poco a poco cada día. Asistí a la experiencia de Nina, asistí a la experiencia de Nina sobre los rotatorios. No conocía el tema, entonces ahí estoy un poco más callado, pero de nuevo me gustó mucho de, de nuevo aprender sobre... Más sobre ti, Mena, fue algo muy bonito y aunque el tiempo se fue, te llevo en el corazón. Después fui a la experiencia de Nikon Línea sobre Time Management porque no soy el mejor en eso y pues la mejor manera de ver qué tan bien o, o qué tan preparado está uno para debatir o platicar de ciertos temas es platicándolo con sus fellows y fue una experiencia muy bonita. Solo estimo nosotros dos, pero eso fue suficiente para sacar una experiencia provechosa. Ahora, hablar un poco más sobre mí, sobre mi persona y en qué es lo que me interesa este semestre. Como ya he hablado mucho, y pues las personas que hablen más de una vez a la semana conmigo entenderán, estoy practicando edición de videos. Entonces decidí hacer mis experiencias enfocadas a lo que estoy aprendiendo porque creo que es un tema que no domino al 100%, pero sé y puedo compartir sobre esto. 
La primera experiencia que hice fue elementos básicos de, diferent, de diferentes editores de videos. Hablé de cómo los menús en Filmora, en Movie, en Movie Studio y en Vegas Pro funcionan. ¿Por qué? Porque a la hora de yo empezar a hacer videos, muy amateur, pero me encanta, me di cuenta que lo que más me alejaba de un programa era la interfaz de usuario y pues explicar cómo moverse en esa marea turbulenta a mí me ayudó cuando estaba aprendiendo y creo que ahí ayuda a los demás. Después, mi segunda experiencia fue la exportación de los archivos y qué es lo que significa a la hora de exportar. Hablamos de MP4, FPS, cómo funcionan los FPS, la resolución, algo que no... A lo que no le dediqué mucho tiempo fue al tamaño de los archivos. ¿Por qué? Porque dependiendo de cómo uno termina exportando el archivo, puede, pasar, puede pesar 56 megabytes o un gigabyte. Y la última experiencia que hice, que creo que fue la que demostró un poco lo que había hecho durante el semestre, fue edición en vivo. Esta fue una experiencia, experiencia en línea porque no puedo traer mi computadora a la U sin miedo de que en la colina se rompa. Pero... Estuve con mis fellows y les expliqué el proceso en Filmora, ya que es el programa más, más fácil de entender para una mente que no entiende tanto sobre edición o simplemente no quiere sufrir cuando Vegas se crashea. Y ahora, pues, quiero hablar un poco de mis personal experiences. No tengo nada como muy grande proyectos, pero ¿por qué es esto? Porque me di cuenta que, como diría Bumburi en una canción, estaba nadando mar, mar adentro y no quería salir de ahí. Y me di cuenta que el problema era yo, a la hora de no querer compartir tanto, por miedo, por demás cosas. Entonces decidí más trabajar en mí mismo para después compartir. Lo primero que hice fue un intento audiolibro de El manual de vida de Picteto. Pensé que iba a ser un éxito porque, ah, me eché 30 minutos de Seneca, me puedo echar solo 73 páginas de Picteto. No fue así, fallé. Pasa, pero me siento muy feliz porque intenté hacer algo... Aparte, solo para practicar lo que a mí me interesa y más con una filosofía que me encanta. Empecé a salir un poco más. Obviamente fue más en mi montañita. Un dato curioso con este video, aunque no esté eh, reproduciéndose, igual no tiene audio, fue que fui a salir a comprar pan. Cuando fue, salí a comprar pan, regresé a mi casa, sentí mis bolsillos, perdí 30 pesos. Bueno, salí y regreso a buscar mis 30 pesos. Alguien ya los había agarrado. Regresé a mi casa... Frustrado, triste, pero feliz que había salido y que el sol me había pegado. En esta experiencia de salir también me di cuenta que a la hora de estar solo trabajando en lo universitario, lastimosamente dejé a una figura muy importante en mi vida, siendo mis mascotas detrás. Entonces decidí salir más con mis perros, porque mis gatos no quieren salir, y si quieren salir es sin correa y a comer pájaros. Y después asistí a Miraflores al tour de Mafalda. No fue un tour, el precio fue muy elevado para lo que me ofrecieron, no me gustó esa parte, pero no me puedo quejar ahí. Y pues, ¿por qué agregó Mafalda todo esto? Es porque me di cuenta que el mundo, no importa cuánto gire y cuántos años pasen, tenemos los mismos problemas políticos y económicos. Aún recuerdo que una de las partes que más disfruté fue cuando presentaron los mundos de Mafalda, los mundos que llega a tener, el mundo enfermo, el mundo pintado y demás. Y pues dije, ¿cuánta razón me falta? ¿Seguimos igual o seguimos peor? Dependiendo de su opinión política. Aunque no leí tanto de manera personal este semestre, puedo decir que me terminé las meditaciones de Marcos Aurelius. Obviamente es como que, wow, no sé cuánto les pasa, pero un tipo de 20 años platicando las meditaciones, qué diferencia. Pero no, yo sí me las terminé, entonces ya puedo decir que no solo vi un TikTok y me creo experto. No lo soy, sigo sin serlo realmente, pero sé que las terminé. ¿Y por qué me importa tanto? Porque de cierta manera comprendí que mis problemas son mejor. Los problemas se, se batallan mejor con personas, no con uno mismo. Y pues voy a estar muy agradecido sobre eso. Y pues lo último, voy a agregar agregado más cosas porque también puedo compartir que hice más amigos, no guatemaltecos, sino que ahí hay un chileno, un canadiense, de más personas que he encontrado en mis andares. Pero decidí poner el calendario. ¿Por qué? Porque a la hora de, de no estar muy condicionado a cuatro, pared, a cuatro paredes para hacer mi trabajo universitario, me di cuenta que tener este elemento afuera de la computadora, afuera, afuera de lo tecnológico, me ayudaba a decir, hay un mundo afuera. Puedo hacer cosas que no requieran de yo estar sentado todo el tiempo.
Pero pues hablando de, de estar sentado todo el tiempo, les quiero compartir lo que hice este semestre en mi Experiential Learning, que fue edición de videos. Eh, están ordenados como un padre describiría a sus hijos, el grandote y un poco descarrilado en la vida, el que no le importa a nadie que es el, me, el del medio y pues el chiquito que es el favorito. Entonces dejen compartir mis experiencias con cada uno de estos programas. Empezamos con Vegas Pro 18. Eh, fue un infierno en vida. ¿Por qué? Porque cada vez que intentaba poner un video o un audio, el programa me describía que no detectaba el tipo de archivo, tenía que guardar de nuevo mi video para rehacerlo. Entonces fue una experiencia muy bonita. Este solo fue un video de prueba que hice probando filtros, transiciones y demás. La interfaz de usuario no es muy buena, lo tengo que admitir, pero fue un buen desafío intentar hacer algo diferente con un programa diferente y pues que no se deja, no se deja querer. Muy estudio. En muy estudio fue un programa que no llegué a entender muy bien. ¿Por qué? Porque está más enfocado a la postproducción que a la producción. Entonces intenté hacer mis marufias, mis movimientos maquiavélicos que solo mi mente entendería. Es decir, editar un video, intentar cortar el video, que fue una tarea imposible, pero lo logré. Y le puse efectos y le puse música, que obviamente no está sonando porque tendríamos que silenciar el audio porque es música licenciada. Y pues con Filmora, que es el que más, el que más me gustó porque es ser tan fácil de usar, y pues en general lo que puedo decir que me enseñó la edición de videos fue que tengo una manera de escribirme, tengo una manera de ser creativo. O siempre he tenido el problema de pensar que la creatividad solo viene a la hora de pintar, dibujar, hacer cosas artísticas, pero me di cuenta que en mi mundo... Cuando quiero y puedo estar solo, me gusta hacer estas cosas con las cosas que me gustan, que son juegos, música y demás, y pues fue una experiencia muy bonita. En general, mi milestone era entender el mínimo nivel de dos editores de videos. Puedo ser feliz diciendo que entendí los tres, las sigo palideando con Vegas a la hora de exportar y que no se crashee cada cinco minutos de los 15 que trabajo o intento trabajar, pero muy feliz, en general muy feliz. Y pues muchas gracias a todos ustedes por estar aquí y nos vemos la siguiente. Hi, um, I was going to say nervous, but not really, not anymore now that I'm here standing in front of you. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about my experiences throughout the semester, uh, starting with the experiences that I created. Uh, my first experience was a field trip to a permaculture farm in Tsununa. Uh, For my part, I had to talk with Neil, who is the owner of the farm and also an incredible permaculture mentor. Well, I had to arrange a boat. I had to arrange the accommodation. I had to even cross the river with my car to get there. Um, and then when we arrived at the place at night, I had to arrange a tuk-tuk to get us to the place, to the farm. It, it, it was quite an adventure. Um, you can see here that uh, we were like working at the farm. We learned how um, Neil works and how he creates value from the sun and reusing um, the waste of other people that live also in Tsununa. For example, he has a friend who sells coconuts, uh, coconut water, and he composts the coconut shells to later create compost and give that to their plants. So he creates value for the community and his family, and he's really amazing. Um, my next experience, was sharing a little bit about coffee. Um, just like Jose said, I do love coffee. Um, here I, I created a presentation about what was the origin of it, how the tradition of making coffee started. Then I brought uh, a few brewing methods, we tested them, and we ended the experience very energized. <laughs> <laughs> Then my last experience was sharing a little bit of my passion for systems thinking. That was a class that I created and took this semester. Uh, I explained what it was. Uh, if you're interested, you can talk with me later. <laughs> um, 
and also we did we had like a, a practice part and I showed them how I used this software to model systems. So that was really cool. Uh, for my attended experiences, I attended to eight. <laughs> uh, I learned Latin with Julia. I learned how to make onigiris with Nico. I learned a little bit about outfits with Lou. I painted with oil with Eileen. I had a photo shoot with Sophie. I learned about makeup, even though I don't use makeup with Sophie. Uh, I also attended a band practice that was really cool. And also a co-working se session. Uh, then for my personal experiences, uh, I attended to a dialogue with Barbara Oakley. It was really cool because she shared with us uh, an unpublished text that she had about different learning styles and we got the opportunity to ask her questions. Uh, then I attended the Volcanes Mangos y Amor Expo of Mena. It was really nice. It had like all the elements to to like embrace all of our senses. Like I, I felt like I was in Antigua there. It was really cool. <laughs> um, I also attended a, a biomimicry final presentation. That's for another class that I'm taking that in a few months I'm going to have to make that final presentation. So that was really cool because I had to the opportunity to watch how the dynamic was like and what the mentors expected of me when I had to present. I was asked to be the photographer of Elemento in a pop-up and in the fashion show. It was the first time that someone called me as an individual photographer and I really enjoyed that process. Um, and also I went to an immersive um, play that was called Abito Bailia Cohen. It was really cool, nothing that I've seen before. Uh, it felt very personal. And I have an extra one. I had the opportunity to be in this startup. It's called FASES. It's an app about education uh, and menstrual health. If you want to know more about it, here's the Instagram. Uh, we're going to be posting there more information about it. Workshops, I was there, and also the MP camp, I was also there. <laughs> and for my milestone, it was to create a professional portfolio that can be used and shared as an introduction to my work and who I am as a person. And I did, I created a website portfolio. Um, I created like different buttons. Here you have uh, biomimicry, permaculture, and product design. Uh, because I have different interests. And I can say that I achieved my milestone because that was the tool that I used for having the opportunity of participating in the Elemento uh, fashion show and, and pop-up. And thank you very much. That was my semester. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to present my experiential learning of this semester. In this presentation, you will find my create experiences, my personal experiences, my milestone experience, which will all lead me to my learning experience. And you will also find plenty of bees. <laughs> so my create experiences were first two workshops based on how to paint with oil over glass. The first, ones were, uh, the first one was with the basics and the first layers, and the other one more about the details and finishing product. The last experience I did was about engraving, and I showed my classmates how to engrave and print their own artworks. So this was much fun. My attended experiences were two workshops by Mena, in which we explored our artistic processes and made us 
it made me question about my own process. Um, and I learned things that I didn't know about uh, why I did my art. Then I also attended Nico's, Nico Fairhurst's experience about how to do onigiris. And it was amazing and it was delicious. I also had a self-exploratory workshop with Isa and I learned things that were in my shadows. <laughs> and then I also learned about the law of compounding with Diego Lara. For my personal experiences, my first week uh, of university, I helped a friend of mine in the art team of a film, a short film called Naxolona which was really fun. I had already been in a short film, but as actress, and this was as a team, so it was really different. I also worked part-time at the university's library, which um, made me do different projects with a limited time frame, such as, for example, this one, in which I did a Holy Week carpet from scratch. I planned it, uh, budgeted it, and executed it it. I also met the ambassador and was able to give him one of my paintings. I uh, organized with an illustrator called Majo Mendizabal a workshop which connected illustration and painting with acrylics. We had a lot of attendees and it was, it was great because it was my first public workshop. Uh, <laughs> I then attended two uh, workshops, one was about all of, uh, all of the contracts artists need to know uh, that give them more security in the art world. world. It was online, it was uh, based in Mexico, and I learned we have more rights than we thought, think we do. I also attended a um, workshop by Portuguese curator Bruno Leitao in Antigua, Guatemala, in which we learned about self-management as artists and about creatorship. And then I helped two of my friends um, mount an exhibition of more than 50 artworks. For my milestone, I, first of all, I had always had the, the wonder of how it would, would be to learn how to play violin. I have always enjoyed its music and I wanted to learn. But I encountered plenty of obstacles. My strings broke three times. I, the string place was not accessible, but I learned about uh, the violin anatomy. And I also used an app which uh, had le different lessons. And I also learned about holding the violin, about posture. I learned about, I, I did some exercises. I learned how to tune, uh, about tempo. I practiced some more, but as you can see, it wasn't great. I learned that <laughs> I learned that violin, even though you try and pay attention and, and you even though you try a lot of times, it, it, it will not be good on the first or even tenth try. Um, but I finally learned something else with all of this that I'm explaining to you. And this is that I was trying to build something, something strong in many places. I was working at the library, studying my career, helping my friends with their projects, doing my own personal projects, studying extra necessary things about the art world. I was working on my art, um, sending proposals to exhibitions. I was learning to play violin. I was networking and showing my work on social media. I was taking care of my relationships with my friends and family. I was taking care of myself and having fun. And these were a lot. So I was, be I was not being able to put enough work into each structure. And I felt as if at any second, uh, one of them or all of them will fall, will fall apart. And some did. So I, <laughs> I learned that I cannot do everything I cannot know everything, I cannot be everywhere, <laughs> and that I cannot please everyone, which is obvious, but sometimes we try to do everything. So I, most importantly, I learned that I would not like to. I have now my priorities straight, 
and they are I give them importance uh, equal importance and they even though they may not seem as much they are enough for my growth and uh, with this structure that I have set clearly in my mind everything else that is not aligned to this even though I may want to do it maybe it's not the time in uh, right now because by maintaining this structure I will be able to build something that I'm proud of and that will help me make something sweet and memorable for throughout my life and that I can share with others and even though <laughs> this was not what I expected at the beginning of the semester it was something new and necessary to learn thank you hello everyone welcome to my very first portfolio day ever as I've been mentioned um, today I'll be showing you what I have done uh, during the semester for experiential learning so firstly starting off with my personal experiences I attended a conference by Barbara Oakley on the use of AI including ChatGPT uh, for being able to grow as a person and grow academically I will tell you that this is the first time that I heard Barbara Oakley speaking and I will say that every single fanboy and fangirl at MPC is 100% correct she's great next up I visited the Mayan Art Museum with my mentor Valeria Sosa um, we went there to draw the architecture of the Mayan Art Museum and then we also took a look at all the um, all the artifacts that were left by the Mayan people next I visited the expo hosted by MENA Volcanes Mangos y Amor and this was an incredible experience where I learned to open my horizons to types of art that I hadn't seen before it was really incredible next up I visited uh, the workshop hosted by Eileen and by Maria Jose Mendizabal in Jardín Creativo where we learned how to draw a character in the shape of a flower it was really fun and it was really opening up to our creative um, to our creative juices and I also attended the College Freedom Forum I had not attended the College Freedom Forum before um, it was really inspiring seeing all these people who were fighting against their oppressive governments and uh, being able to see all of these actions that people take was really interesting and eye-opening to the reality that people live outside of Guatemala and I also attended the experiment hosted by Wilder Vieda for the book camp class at the Vernon Smith lab where we learned about uh, some concepts in economy that I hadn't had the um, opportunity to play around with and be able to study in depth before so it was really enjoyable next up my attended experiences the first one is the permaculture introductory course by CAM during this course we went to Lake Izabal and we learned about the process of uh, having a permaculture based farm and we also ate some really delicious permaculture based food that left our taste buds uh, wishing that we were there still for months afterwards <laughs> next up is an experience hosted by Eileen where we learned how to draw with oil on glass during this experience um, I got to mess around with um, a technique and medium that I had never touched before in my entire life and it turns out that I really liked it I was scared at the beginning but it turns out it was really really fun next up is Fotografiarte by Sophie where we learned how to take pictures on our phones and make them look professional it was incredible and uh, it was really surprising how easily she was able to help us out to make these pictures look amazing and we also have an experience hosted by Nina where we learned how to keep a sourdough starter and learned about a couple of the benefits that sourdough bread has in our lives during this experience uh, Nina was able to actually give us some sour bread, sourdough bread starter um, and we were able to learn how to actually keep it and make sure that it doesn't die on us 
And here are a couple of the extra experiences that I attended as well. Uh, these are not all of the experiences that I attended, um, but I loved every single one of them. You guys, you guys all did a great job. And my own created experiences, starting off with an experience where I taught people how to make onigiri, uh, which is a Japanese rice ball um, filled with fish. And in this experience, uh, people learned a little bit about the history of it and uh, were able to make their own rice balls. Um, next up, I also had an experience uh, teaching people a little bit about the ways that I learned how to be a little bit more productive. Granted, I personally am not an expert at time management. I'm actually pretty terrible at it. But some of the strategies that I taught other people helped me be a little bit less terrible at it. So I feel like it was worth showing to other people. And lastly, I uh, taught Thomas how to speak a little bit of Japanese, which is a bit of a um, fast forward to next semester's um, experiential learning. Um, I thought a little bit about the grammar rules and a couple of useful phrases as well. For MP Camp, I was there. You can see me right here. <laughs> it was really fun. And regarding my milestone, my milestone was to figure out a system that works best for me for the purposes of time organization and accountability. Now, did I fully reach my milestone? No. I was able to find a couple of tools, but I didn't manage to find a system specifically. Some of the tools that I will be taking into the future with me as I keep trying to find a full-on system that works for me to make sure that I meet my deadlines and um, I'm able to have a good life experience is, for example, time batching, setting my phone to grayscale, and separating work and rest areas, among others. So these tools are not the same as a system, but they're still better than nothing. So I'm willing to keep them for the future. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthias Esclad. I'm in my fourth semester at the MPC studying creative and executive direction. This is my experiential portfolio for this semester. I'll begin with the experiences that I assisted to. First, I learned how to make sourdough with Nina, which was pretty cool and delicious because she brought some delicious brownies. Sadly and unfortunately, I wasn't able to keep my baby sourdough and I killed him. He died, but we'll make another one eventually. I also uh, assisted to a two-session experience of La Procesual, which is Mena Herrero's personal project in which we shared a bit about our art practices and got feedback. It was very enriching. I also got the pleasure to enjoy some time doing some engravings with Eileen, specifically lino cuts, which are, well, I thought they were very rare here in Guate, but now I learned that there's a, a provider here, so <laughs> it was pretty cool. I also assisted to six other experiences, so thank you all. It's been an amazing semester. Now I'm gonna tell you about the experiences that I created. My first experiences was Primero Tuvimos Que Morir, in which we had a little field trip to the remodeled Museo de Arte Maya, in which we learned more about the heritage, about the artistic heritage of Guatemala, and it was amazing. My second experience was called Silencio Escucha, in which we explored the philosophical concepts of phenomenology from Heidegger and Husserl, specifically the concept called epoche, in which you have a temporal suspension of judgments in order to have a deeper understanding of the world. We did it through an exploration of meditative motions and movements, and afterwards a deep contemplation of random objects. And my last experience was called Automatismo, in which we explored three different techniques that the surreal artists in the 1920s explored. All three of them had to do with the liberation of the mind from a rational and structural state. Uh, the first one through writing, the second one through drawing, and the third one through painting. My milestone for this semester was to increase my reachability, production, and network 
using my art and using me as an artist as subject of study. The goals that I set myself for this semester were, first, the development of an artistic performance, second, art having artistic or doing artistic innovation, third, the production of an art collection, and fourth, uh, the expansion of my network. And these are the personal experiences, or rather, some of the personal experiences that helped me achieve that those goals and that milestone. First, I assisted to the workshop of Bruno Leitao with Eileen. Uh, it was amazing. It was about artistic self-management and curatorship. Bruno Leitao is one of the most important curators in the world right now, in the contemporary, contemporary art world. He's from Portugal, and it was in La Nueva Fabrica. It was amazing. I also got to meet many uh, other artists, including those three that are from El Salvador, and to get closer to Jocelyn Pinto, that is also an amazing curator from Guat. I also used different practices in order to explore the artistic performance, thinking of the way in which you have to structure it, also thinking of the conceptualization, documentation, and the way, to, and the way in which I feel more confident uh, exploring it. None of this has come out yet, but it's it's coming soon. Uh, I also explored different techniques when it came to my art production using different materials that I hadn't used before or different techniques. Uh, also trying to make my processes uh, each and every time more professional. Also, thanks to La Procesual. I also did a collect collective mural. Uh, I got commissioned a mural that I decided to make a collective one. It was amazing because I got to learn about many other emerging artists from Guatemala and I learned about the ways in, in which we can manage a project when it's a collective one. I also assisted to a series of different art happenings because that's what I love to do. Uh, uh, these are some of them. The first one was the first, uh, the first solo exhibition of Angelica Serech called Diálogos del Maguey, it was amazing. I also got to meet Angelica, and she's an amazing person. I also went to the guided tour of Margarita Surdia, Un Universo Documental. It was wonderful. Margarita, Margarita Surdia is amazing here in Guate. I love her. Uh, and I also assisted to a fashion and art performance called Avito by Lia Cohen, which is one of my uh, mentors this semester. Then I also, these are some of the exhibition calls that I participated in that fortunately I got accepted this year. The first one is La Galería Abierta, done by La Municipalidad de Guatemala in Edificio de Correos. Martín Najera also participated. I also participated in Arte en Mayo that has just recently opened because we're in May already. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one that I'm going to tell you about is Juanio, uh, which I'm very excited about because it's my first time presenting, well, getting accepted in Juanio. Juanio will be until June, but um, throughout the semester, I had to work with them uh, in order to send my proposal. And also, once I got selected, we had to discuss uh, different details about the way in which it was going to be exhibited. And, uh, before I finish, I wanted to say something, which is that even though all of these accomplishments have been great and very enriching for my personal and professional life, it's very clear to me that my greatest achievement this semester is the realization that the importance that lies within all of these accomplishments has very little to do with the act on itself, but rather on the experiences that you get to share with others. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Thomas Fairhurst and I'm here to present my first ever experience portfolio. Now, I'm gonna start off with the boring part, the lists. So, personal experiences. Uh, the first personal experience I have is being in Guatemala. I don't come from here, I'm from very, very far away. I come with a lot of friends, but I've never lived alone. Well, with my brother, we've never lived alone. <laughs> so, coming to grips to that has been an experience all on its own and I am getting a grasp of it slowly, uh, bit by bit. 
Uh, second of all, getting into the fashion world. Last semester was only uh, an amateuristic passion, you could say. And now I'm actually doing stuff. I have a machine, I have blouses, I have a bag that you can see on the table over there. And I have a sweater that I cropped and um, tightened the waist. Uh, third, the biggest one, Semana de la Moda, which was <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, I, was, I had the opportunity to get invited uh, to be on the backstage of uh, one of the two biggest fashion events in Guatemala. And um, I learned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot about the industry. Fourth, going with my friends. I love my friends more than anything else in the world. That includes you, yes. And um, <laughs> yeah, I was able to go on a trip with them. I've never driven to Coan, and this time I, dro I drove from here to Coan, and then all the way back to here and to the beach with them. So that was huge, and I, to be able to do it with my friends was an experience, definitely. And then I was able to participate as a model for a, uh, <laughs> for a second star, a Luz and Cam's project, which being able to have that experience as a model, it definitely, <laughs> definitely gave me more perspective and more knowledge about the industry. Uh, now, experiences I created. Um, the first one was Runway on a Budget. Uh, Diego participated in going to the Megapaca, uh, learning the fundamentals of what makes a great outfit and how to find one in the Megapaca, and then how to catwalk. Yes, this is Diego catwalking. <laughs> Uh, I, this experience was with Lou. A uh, second experience I, I was able to be a part of in creating was with Diego, band practice. Uh, we created a song with Cam, <laughs> which was amazing. And setting up all the different band instruments was definitely something I wasn't prepared for. Uh, now, the last one I created was How Poetry Changed War. This is a topic I'm very passionate about. It's a lifelong passion I've had. And we explored how art and poetry changes how we view war. Uh, Matis and my brother were a part of that. Last, experiences attended. Uh, I attended an experience by Cam, going to Atitlan and learning about permaculture. Uh, I attended Matis' experience, I'm going to the museum and learning about Mayan art. I attended my brother's experience making onigiris. I attended Sochi's experience taking pictures. I attended Cam's experience learning about coffee. I made a pretty good coffee. I attended Sochi's and Isa's experience about uh, how to create a good story. And I attended my brother's experience about learning a little bit about Japanese. And Javi's experience about uh, video editing and exporting videos. Now, this scene, I'm sure you all know it, has a quote from the movie. I'm not sure if I can say it, but I'll say it. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire! Now, this is very important to me. Why? Because I feel like this semester as a whole was a failure. I see my, ex my experience throughout this semester as a failure. There's still a lot, a lot I think that I could have done. There's still a lot that I wanted to do, but I just didn't get around to it. Why? Well, I guess that's just how life goes, right? Well, that's something I want to change. That's something I want to change for next semester. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from my experiences in everything I did this semester in order to change for next semester and do a lot more with the time I have. Why Great Balls of Fire? Because that's just how you have to roll. You have to do everything you can within the time you have and run like your balls are on fire. Um, um, as many of you know, Goose in the movie, I'm sorry, spoilers, dies, right? And Maverick is thinking that he's gonna quit. He doesn't want to, fi to fly jets anymore because of his great loss. But then, what does he do? He gets back on the horse. He gets back in the jet, and he does what he does best. This is what I want to do. I want to take this setback, I want to take this uh, failure of a semester, and through vacation, reminisce on it for next semester to be the best one yet. Thank you, Goose approves of my experiences, and <laughs> that's about it. Hello, welcome to my presentation. Um, this has been a very strange semester. Now that it's my first semester in a fellowship. And um, honestly, I, it, I've never really experienced much like this, even though it hasn't, there hasn't been a lot going on. But um, 
I feel like I learned a lot, but I didn't really reach my goal. So I'm just gonna start off with that. So um, experiences. This was an experience I made with Tomas about um, band practice, which basically just means getting a bunch of instruments and a bunch of people in a room and jamming out. And here we are jamming out. My next experience, an experience that I attended, was Matias' experience about meditation. And here we are, everyone. And, oh God, and... <laughs> uh, this is another experience I attended. That was the runway day with Tomas and Lou, and they did make me do a catwalk. It didn't go as bad as I planned. And this was a trip to the museum that Matias organized. And I, I don't know what this picture is, but it was the only one we had. My personal experiences. Uh, you can't really see much here. This is um, a picture of me with my camera in front of a mirror. This is a picture of me hanging from a tree with like my legs dangling. And this is a picture of some random radio tower in my neighborhood. But this is something that I never thought I would do, which was uh, picking up a camera, which is something that never really inter interested me until I had one in my hands and then I couldn't stop taking pictures. So that was something that happened through all of the semester. This is a cat and like five little babies that live in my house now. They live in my garden. They just decided to live there, but um, they started living there a couple months back and we've just been taking care of them and they're surprisingly nice, even the babies. And this is a place very special to me. This is a place where I used to go with my friends, my family friends, almost every year from when I was maybe like three years old to 13 or 14 or something. And um, here you can see I wrote my initials in a bunk bed when I was about six or seven. But this, this place was, uh, I went here in Semana Santa and I think that after that point, everything kind of changed because I hadn't been here in so long and I kind of went there only with my parents and I wasn't there with my friends anymore. So I was like, it was very like real for a second. And we can skim through these pictures here. Here are some, these are my friends from back then. There's me, uh, here's me and my friend. We used to just pour water in buckets and just sit there all day because it was so hot. Uh, Here's us. I'm always doing a face in these. I don't know why. Um, another one. And there's me. And that was when I was about seven or eight years old. And I feel like going to that place again kind of changed me in a really, really big way. Um, here is a website that I've been working on. It's a work in progress still, but um, it's uh, for a class I'm doing with, with Vale. And honestly, I never really pictured myself making a website or spending time, so much time making a website because it's not easy. And um, it's been really great though. And I can't wait to keep developing it, even though I don't have much time. And this is classified. This is my book. People keep asking what my book is. It's about dreams and that's all you gotta know. But it's been, I've been, this is the thing I've been most consistent with is the book. Um, and I'm very proud of what's, what's coming out and how well I've been managing my time with the book. My experiential learning. Well, it's fine anyways. There's my, oh, there's my drums. Um, <laughs> uh, I've been playing the drums consistently all year. Um, well, I've been playing them since before, but this semester I've been hitting them hard, and <laughs> there they are. But um, part of my experiential learning was, or well, my experiential learning was um, making an EP at the end of it, which is three to four uh, songs. And um, as you can see, I've, I've been practicing the drums. Here's me playing the bass. It was really dark last night, because it was night. 
But um, that's another thing that I never thought I would do. It's my brother's bass, it's not mine. Um, but it's been really cool, playing it really cool. Uh, learning an instrument that seems so impossible, because everything just seems impossible with, with instruments at first, but then you just keep playing it and, and you get better and better at it. And you can't see that, it kinda. You kinda can, but that's me with my guitar on my bed, playing it. Um, that's another thing that's my brother's. It's also very crazy that I learned to play guitar. I never would have imagined myself doing that. I'm not the best at it, but uh, I, can, I can play a mean riff. And um, this is the drums that I recorded. This is the guitar, which I kind of looped because I messed up at one part. And this is the bass. And basically, um, this is a draft of a song that I was making. So my milestone, which was the EP, I feel like I have failed pretty bad. I feel like I have maybe spent too much time on the book. No, not really, because I, I, I had a lot of free time. But I feel like I misused uh, a lot of free time this semester. And seeing everyone here made me kind of realize that I kind of need to step my game up. And hopefully next year, uh, it'll be better. Hello, everyone. Like Diego said, I'm Nina Fleming, but you know that. <laughs> I am a middle child, which means I am often forgotten. But I'm very happy to report I didn't feel forgotten one second here at the MPC for my first semester. And I, I felt very included with all the experiences I did. I went to Julita's experience about reading. She made sure I didn't look good in this picture. My eyes are closed, but it, it was a lovely experience in which I got to share about a C.S. Lewis book I'm reading and also got to see what everyone else was reading, which made me very happy to get to know these people even more. I also attended, a, attended an experience with Isa and Sochi in which they talked about storytelling and how that impacts you as an artist, which was just one of the most beautiful things I've seen since I've been at the MPC. And also I went to uh, Lou, thank you. Lou is such a creative, beautiful person. And I've seen that manifested in all the things she has done. She talked about what would you wear if you were a cartoon character, which made me think of myself as a little animated person and made me feel like I maybe was doing something right if I could think of myself as an animated person. And it helped me to kind of ground myself a bit more this semester and make me feel like I was doing the right thing. I was in the right place. As for the experiences I did, you guys have made me feel very validated by talking about my sourdough experience, which was the first one I did. I came and I showed you guys my sourdough starter, Kim. I'm sorry for the people whose sourdough babies died but I am happy I got to share that with you. Secondly, I was able to talk about Rotaract, which is a project that I have begun to do with Vale in her class. And it's a work in progress, but I'm very happy to have been able to share it with a few people here. Mena was the first to show up, and it made me so, so happy. So I assure you, Mena, your presence is noted. Um, you've been here enough, and we love you so much for being here. And my last experience was talking about the lymph lymphatic system, which is something I have been studying and researching for my experiential learning. And I was able to share a bit about that and the things I have done to help my lymphatic system with Nico. Thank you, Nico, for being there. These were the goals or milestones that I had for this semester. My experiential learning was focused on health and wellness because I had a very hard go of it last semester and I wasn't taking very good care of myself. I don't want that to happen ever again. So these are a few of the things I promised myself I'd do. I wanted to establish a workout routine that I could do and also find some things that I, some recipes I could make 
that I, so I could make sure I was still feeding myself even if I was studying or doing other things. Easy recipes that I have made available to you, to all of you guys on my folder for the class. So if you feel like it, check them out. And lastly, I wanted to incorporate new habits that would help me to maintain all these things. It has been very hard to find a workout routine that works for me. As a disabled person, um, a lot of these things are not of machines and other things are not available to me. But that changed when I got this handy little thing over here. It is a hook that I attach to my left hand and it allows me to lift weights as well as do other, other activities like what I'm doing right here. Um, I have been able to establish a routine that consists of cardio and also these different activities. I am still very afraid of machines at the gym. The last time I tried to do the rowing machine by myself, I fell off. And everyone, everyone there looked at me like I was crazy. But, so I still got a ways to go. But that was intentional. I, I purposefully chose my experiential learning so it could be something that I could continue to grow with throughout my semesters at MPC because it is something that I truly think can help me throughout my entire life. And I hope that I will be able to grow even more from it. These are some of the recipes I came up with. This is an adrenal cocktail that helps your adrenal system, which helps you with stress and also when you're feeling tired. This is one of the recipes on on my folder for you guys. It really helps me to keep my energies up. And this is a fake cookie dough made from almond butter and almond flour that is gluten-free, Cam, I'm seeing you. <laughs> you didn't introduce me. Right, so, but I'll make it for you. <laughs> and also these were some, some habits and personal experiences that I, I have adopted this semester to kind of help me. Firstly, I started oiling my hair. That worked until it didn't. This morning I came out of the, out of the bathroom from getting ready and my mom said, go back in, your hair's disgusting. So I think that can improve a bit more. Second, I've been taking magnesium glycinate to help me sleep. It helps to relax your muscles. There's a whole section on it in my book. In, it's actually not there. But I have a book that I've been reading called This Is Your Brain on Food. And that's been part of my experiential learning to read that book and see how food impacts your brain and how you function in the day to day. For that reason, I have also been um, keeping track of the water I drink and using a water calculator. I drink about 100 ounces every day, but I am a little person, so that's OK. <laughs> um, and as for dry brushing is something that I talked to Nico about, that it's really good for your lymphatic system and it's something I have been keeping up. And I, if anyone's interested in that, I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, lastly, the experiences I had, I organized an Earth Day for the little kids in my community. And we all went to plant French lavender in my neighborhood. And lastly, I, I went to the botanical garden here in Guatemala for the first time where everything was taller than me. But it was nice because the weather is nicer when you're closer to the ground. And I want to thank you all for this wonderful semester. Here's to an even better 2024-02.